Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 39. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Well, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Cash Flow Diary. Glad that you are here. If you haven't already, make sure that you download episode number one. Understand the background and format of the show. If you're ever curious, who is this guy, Jay? then uh, you can definitely go there uh, to understand a little bit more about that. In the meantime, many of you have participated in, and I'm glad to see you on our webinars, or sorry, I should say coaching calls that we've been doing, uh, because you've been wanting to know how to raise private capital, and that's what I've we've been teaching you. If you're kind of curious about learning how to do that, go to learninvestingnow.com. Right now, what's the, the flavor of the month, if you will, is teaching you how to raise private capital. So we're doing yet another coaching call. Uh, depending on when you're listening this, you should make sure make your way over there because what we're going through is the just a series of information. Download the ebook understand exactly what's going on. My commitment is to give you the information necessary that you could raise your first pot of money, whether whether that be $10, $200, $200,000, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, But at the end of the day, the information that we're sharing is the exact same information that I use to go out there and raise capital to help uh, individuals provide them streams of income and just happen to use real estate to do it. So again, go over to learninvestingnow.com put your email in the box and start learning today. All right, let's get this party started. Um, as we are getting close to a, you know, um, a, a holiday, that holiday being, you know, Christmas, um, one of the things that I was thinking about was simply the fact that uh, during that time, this time of year, we often do something we we often think about <laughs> what we want. And that's pretty much what we're going to talk about today. Now, the title of the episode, I, I promise you, I can't really help you with techniques on how to lose weight, uh, but I can definitely help you with the make more money. But And if you listen in between the lines, in between the lines, if you listen in between the lines, you'll be able to pick up a few things that will probably help you when it comes to actually shedding a few pounds, if that's something that you're into as well. Anyway, uh, before we get started, let's talk about our cash quote for this particular episode. It comes, oh, well, actually, before I tell you who it's from, here's the quote. It is always wise to look ahead, but difficult to look further than you can see. It is always wise to look ahead, but difficult to look further than you can see. That comes to us from Winston Churchill. Now, because I know that there's a number of you listening in the UK, I will use his full name. It is Sir Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill. And in researching him just a little bit, one of the things that I learned was he had a lot of titles. I mean, it was Knight of the Garter, Order of Merit, Champion of Honor, uh, there was a territorial decoration. He also had deputy lieutenant, fellow of the Royal Society, as well as the Royal Academian. All of that, and he was the prime minister of the UK for a while. I, I don't know, but I, I think he was a busy man. The point is, is it is always wise to look ahead, but difficult to look further than you can see. One of the things that uh, when we're looking at being able to get into real estate investing is, you know, how to look ahead. We're looking toward the future, especially if you're an entrepreneur of any kind. You you know, you see more promise in the future than you do in the past. That's one of the reasons you're an entrepreneur. And it's always wise to look ahead, but difficult to look further than you can see. Here's my point. If you say to yourself, I- I've never earned more than $100,000. There was a friend of mine 
who for a while he he said to himself, I'm just not a hundred thousand dollar guy. I don't know what that means, uh, but to him it meant that he just could not earn more than a hundred thousand dollars a year. And so long as he held that uh, thought or, or saw himself that way, he couldn't see any further than that. Well, needless to say, uh, he doesn't do that anymore, uh, and he's able to earn more than a hundred thousand dollars a year, which is great. But he. You could look ahead all you want, but if you can't see or envision yourself being, having, enjoying, uh, witnessing, or what have you, the things that you're after out there in the future, be that losing weight or making more money, um, you, you're you just not going to be able to get there. You know, It's always wise to look ahead, but difficult to look further than you can see. A friend of mine, mentor, if you will, um, used to say the following phrase, and I, and I still love it a lot. It's simply this. Go as far as you can see, and when you get there, you will see further. And oftentimes, with using that, you know, philosophy, using that way of thinking, it'll get you further down the road than trying to figure out all the steps before you actually take the first one. And at the end of the day, it's taking that first one when you realize that you probably need to, after taking that first one, I should say, is when you realize you need to adjust course anyway. So it's better to go ahead and start stepping and then adjust as you go. Anyway, thanks, Winston. Glad that you're there. Hopefully, we can also look ahead and learn from your wisdom as well. All right. Now, today, we're going to invest some time in you in understanding uh, how to make sure that this next year, these next 365 days, this next uh, revolution around the sun is a little bit more productive for you. Okay? It's a little bit more productive for you. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, I'm just going to break it down simply. Uh, we won't have time in the in this particular episode to go into uber detail. But I figure if I give you something, it's better than giving you nothing so that we can actually do this. Otherwise, it'd be like an eight-hour episode. And who wants that? So uh, here are the basic things that are necessary in order for you to be able to start next year now, and more importantly, should start now, because we all know that now o'clock is the only time we've got, okay? So we so that you can be able to put yourself in a position to make 2014 look even better than, you know, 2013. Even if your 2013 looked like the best 2013 you've ever had, there's a way to make it look better, all right? So, but something was bothering me. You know, when we go to the malls or the shops or, or wherever you go, you see this figure and these kids lined up and the, and the kids all line up, sit on this figure's lap and tell them what they want. During this time of year, there's a big focus on what do you want? You know, you ask kids, what do you want for Christmas? And what do you want for Christmas? You ask your spouse, what do you want for Christmas? And then occasionally, uh, husbands, you ask your spouse, what do you want for Christmas? And then what ends up happening is like, don't you know? <laughs> anyway, you, you get where I'm coming from. The point is, is during this time, for some reason, during this time, it's okay to ask other people, what do you want? And it's okay if we give ourselves permission to actually think about <laughs> what we want. And it's okay to express what we want. However, outside of this time of year, it becomes interesting about expressing what you want. And one of the things that I was thinking about is outside of this time, when is it popular to ever talk about what you want and more importantly, Take it seriously because kids take it seriously when you ask them what they want, right? They're writing lists. They're, they're telling everybody. They, they, and, and they're not just telling you because they want to tell you about what they want. They're, they're telling you with an expectation to be receiving it and soon. And they know the exact date it's supposed to be there, right? And uh, let me ask you this question. Do you take what you want that seriously? Uh, because I, I, you know, it was just a question that popped in my head. And well, and here's how you can know. You you can know by A, following what kids do. They make a list, right? They make a list. They just tell you, this is, this is what I want. Here is my list. We have songs about lists that we check twice, find out if you've been naughty or nice. And the question is, is do you even take the time to, do you even know what you want anymore? Has, has life really gotten that bad? 
Now, I was talking to one of my uh, uh, coaching clients today, and she said, here's what I want for Christmas. I want a deal. And I'm like, well, that's a good one right there. I, she wants to do a new deal. I, I can totally understand where she's coming from. You know, what I want is a deal, period. That's great. But she's clear on it. That's the point. And as she communicates to other people that what I want is a deal, what I want is a deal, what I want is a deal, what do you think is likely to happen for her? <laughs> she's likely to get a deal, either directly or indirectly, because everyone knows what she wants. Somebody is going to help her find that deal and help her get it. And it's a simple list. It's a short list. It didn't take her long to figure it out, but she's clear about what she wants. When you're making your list, you often, well, I know I do, put more than one thing. So the next step in that process is to order it from smallest to largest, right? You know, the kids got the small gifts on there, right? But one thing that's never on the list is clothes. But anyway, they, they got the small stuff on there, and then they got the super mega double triple giant robot or the new version of PlayStation 36 or whatever that might be uh, this year as well. And, and then depending as your kid gets older, it starts to be, well, I'd like a car or a house or, you know, it'd be really awesome if you just pay for my school and all this other stuff going on. Right. Whatever it is, order it from smallest to largest. That's all I'm saying. Make a list. What do you want? I'm asking you, what do you want? Order it from smallest to largest. Now, then you begin to have some fun stuff with it. Go get some photos. You're like, well, where am I going to get some? The internet is full of photos of whatever it is that you want. And then more importantly, try to get photos with you in it, you participating with it in some way, shape, or form. You say you want a car, but how do I get a photo with a Ferrari? Well, go down to the Ferrari dealership and take a photo. I'm sure the salespeople there have seen a camera before and will not freak out at the fact that you were trying to take a photo of a Ferrari because it kind of makes sense. Um, not that I fit in those Italian cars, but that's okay. Um, get a photo. That's all I'm saying. Get a photo. It begins to connect you emotionally to this goal. And then you're going to put all those pictures, everything you just written, wrote down, the list and the ordered list, uh, as well as the photos into a book, not a board, a book. And I'm very strategic about the book because the book you can keep with you, a board sits on your office and never, you never have when you need it. And at the end of the day, you want to keep that vision book with you. So that as you go around, you kind of know what's going on. So think about this. What do you want? When is the last time you actually sat down and thought about what do you want? Take it seriously. Kids do. Then let's talk about this next thing. This next thing will also assist you in the process of being able to earn more money next year. Who do you need to be to get it? Who do you need to be to be worth it? Who do you need to be to be able to earn it? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, most of us, the things that we want are usually more than what we have now for most of us, right? And oftentimes that requires us becoming a different person. So what, what am I referring to here? Uh, it's the popular personal development category, right? How, how, how do you become a better version of you? And there, there are three simple things you can do. You got books, you got MP3s, uh, as well as seminars, right? Not to mention the video courses and all this other stuff. You've got to become a bigger, better version of you because you will never out earn your personal growth. It just won't happen. I uh, wrote an article about that on the blog if you've ever went and checked that out, but you can't out earn your personal growth. You may say, Oh, well, I'd like, like to own another 100 units. Great. Well, are you the person who has the character that could be responsible with 100 units? Yes or no? I don't know. You'd say, well, oh, I'd like to have a million dollars. Great. Are you the person that has the character to be able to own and control and steward a million dollars? You say, well, I, I'd like, you know, I, I just like the more peace on earth. Awesome. Are you the person who is an example of the piece that you are saying you'd like to see more people do. I, I don't know, but here's what I do know. You're going to be the same today with one small difference, the books, you, uh, the books you read, the people you meet. And what it comes down to is it's time to read some books, listen to some MP3s, maybe even a few video courses, and go to some seminars to become these things. And so when you go, know that your, your, your intent 
of behind going is to become that better person. Doesn't really matter, but guess what? If you haven't made your list, you don't know what that type of better person is. And guess what? One of the things that could be on that list that we were just talking about is I, I want to be a more generous person. There's nothing wrong with that. Not everything has to be tangible, right? Everything you want does not have to be tangible. You could just simply say, I want to be more peaceful, less angry, more joyful. I, I, I want to be more loving, more self-controlled, uh, more patient, <laughs> more kind, more gentle. There are many different character traits that uh, you and I both uh, have that are positive, and we have some that limit our ability in impact. And we want to make sure that when we're thinking about the ones that limit our ability and impact, that we can ask for some of the ones that, uh, well, don't. <laughs> what it comes down to is books, MP3s, seminars. These are the things that are going to develop us, you and I, personally. Uh, we develop more and we learn a lot through relationships. And sometimes you can have relationships with authors uh, through the books. You can have relationships with some of your most favorite people uh, by listening to their voice, kind of like you do right now. Uh, for those of you listening to my voice, maybe for some of you I'm helping in some way. Uh, I don't know, uh, but I hope so. That's the intent. That's the goal, right? Uh, and as well as attending some of the seminars and live and doing the exercises, I can't even stress how important it is. If a book is has been written and the author has taken the time to give you things to do, but you don't do them, did, I mean, the, the whole point of writing a book and tell you the things to do is so that you go do them. <laughs> Otherwise, everything stays the same. And and the change, the personal development, the growth is in the action. Once you know what to do, that that's one thing. But doing it, you learn it to a whole new level. And it becomes a part of your being. And you, who do you need to become to get the things you want? Who do you need to become? I don't know, but you do. You do. You already know who that, what the characteristics of a leader are that you admire. You know the ones that you have and you know the ones that you don't. And for most of us, nearly anything that we're looking to obtain requires us to become a better leader and possess more of those characteristics. Next, and last, but unfortunately, it's what people focused on first, is how will you obtain it? They go, well, you know, how do I fill out a contract? How do I write an offer? How do I make an offer? What price do I put? All of those things tend to come first. And unfortunately, they're just the, they're not, they're, they're not where your focus should be. They're not where my focus should be. How will you obtain it? Well, uh, this, these are the business development activities, right? These are the income generating activities. Uh, you and I both know that we, we like uh, to have a bigger, better business. That's great. Uh, a business generates its income through serving customers, either with a product or a service, right? Well, how do you plan to gain more customers? Well, you 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 first must meet them. You got to contact them in some way. I don't care if that's personally. I don't care if that's an ad. It doesn't really matter. The point is, is you have to have activities and you've got to be consistent with them all the way through. Income generating activities, contacting new people, adding new people to your database is a very, very key and important income generating activity. And, and just to give you a really, really huge example of this, this happens to you and I every day. You're being added to other people's database every day. Anytime you watch a commercial, you're being added to somebody's database because they just generated an impression on you, uh, attempting to influence your buying habits or your buying process or, or even making you aware of something that you did not even know existed that you didn't even know you wanted. <laughs> and now you're aware of it. And it happens every day. And there's no avoiding it. There's just, it's just not, there's no avoiding it. And, you know, so every time you see a commercial, that company is adding you to their database. Even if you didn't fill out the form, right, you're still being added because it, it has a completely different goal to influence your buying habits. You may not be ready to buy at that moment, but by the time you're ready to buy the car, you might be thinking of those helpful Honda people uh, more than you are thinking of any other manufacturer simply because you, you've been made, your awareness is so high, okay? 
So understand that you also get the privilege of contacting people and letting them know that you are in business. Uh, by the way, if you have trouble with that one, and as I did, I know I, I had tons of trouble. I didn't want to tell people I'm in business. <laughs> what a self-defeating thought is that? Because you could be like, I don't want to bother them. I don't want to get in their way, right? It, that's not, That's by the way, that's a recipe for disaster. Uh, I had to reframe some of those thoughts. One of them is just understanding that the word promote simply means to make known. Nothing more, nothing less. Make it known that you're in business. And once you make it known you're in business, the next step is to invite them to something. You have to invite them to do something with you. Invite them to come down to your store. Invite them to fill out your web form for a report. Invite them to... <laughs> to listen to a podcast even. And who knows, maybe through listening to the podcast, they may get to know you and, and you may actually help them just with that information, which could be great for them and for you. And when you invite them, whatever you're inviting them to, you, you must then provide something of value, whatever it is. And during that process, you're, you're showing your competency, you're showing your credibility, you're showing why people should do business with you. But this is the point. These are the income generating activities. And after you've done that, then you must follow through. Give them a reason to do business with you. Maybe they'll contact you with the reason that they want to do business with you, as some of you have, and I appreciate that, and that's great. And then at the, the last step is that you, you always ask for referrals. You're never too busy for anyone's referral. You can always, always, always make time for a referral. And we do our best here to answer all the emails, to get back to you as quickly as humanly possible, answer your questions. And uh, believe it or not, at this moment, I still answer many of those emails myself personally. So the income generating activities are key. They're the how you will obtain it. Notice I didn't say you have to buy and do these 12 steps uh, or I didn't necessarily, sorry, I gave you the steps, but I didn't necessarily say, well, in order to, to gain business, you got to place an ad in the newspaper and you got to say this particular script and you got to do it this particular way because here's the, here's the truth of the matter. There's no one way that works for everyone. The best that I can do for anybody is to tell you what has worked for me. And, and so long as I give you the blanket template and outline and you do activities that fit within that, you'll find your way to success. Provided you're the person who doesn't quit. That gets us back to the personal development. Providing the per you're the person who's willing. And here's the key. Here's the glue that makes everything that I have said thus far work together. And by the way, the glue that helps you lose weight. Now I got your attention, don't I? <laughs> Uh, the glue is accountability. All of this that I just said to you is good. But if you're not held accountable to it in some way, shape, or form, it, it, it all falls apart. And I, I've just learned the hard way many times that I can't hold myself accountable. I need other people to help me stay accountable in all facets of life, uh, be that finances, be that spiritual, be that with my, uh, my kids, my spouse, making sure you make enough time for everybody, uh, making sure you prioritize properly, uh, the business, the customers, the, the, those that work with me, helping us achieve this goal so that we can go out there and serve more people. This is not for the faint of heart. This is for you, though, if you want to become a better person, and most of us do. But it's just sad, I think, because we don't spend enough time thinking even about what do we want. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cashflow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.